Right guys, let's have a look at some tips on first of all how to set this squeegee up, okay? So I know this squeegee has been given a couple of guys some issues um, and been causing some problems. So let's have a look at how I personally set it up. Before we get into that, I'm just going to stress that I have not modded my squeegee in any way, shape or form. This is completely standard. Um, it's not, there's been no clip bending of any kind or channel bending or anything like that. Um, it's completely standard, okay? So, right, let's move on. So we're taking our, first of all, our squeegee rubber. Now, the one I have and use at the moment is Etre Master Soft. Now, this one is quite a tight fit, okay? So this is why this method needs to be done to get the channel and the rubber to be compatible, okay? So we've got our basin of soapy water here to simulate, obviously, your bucket of solution that you'll be carrying around with you. So first of all, give that a little dunk in there, make sure that's wet. Let's lay that down there. And your channel as well, do the same thing. Make sure that's wet as well. Try and reduce the friction. Okay, now we take, we've got a little cloth here. We're gonna be grabbing the rubber with this to try and pull it along the channel. So what I normally like to do is one side has writing on it, it says Etere, and the other side doesn't. So normally what I do is side one is the side with writing and side two is the side with no writing. So I know quickly and easily if I've used that side or not without having to actually examine the ends of it and see if it's worn or not. Okay, it's so a little tip for you there. Right, now, so grab one end of it, like so, and just start pulling it along the channel, like that. Now this is quite a tight fit, these Etre ones. You'll find usually like razor red, and Mormon's own and things like that, they fit and go in a lot easier than Etre, but then again, the plus side to it being a tight fit is it's not gonna move, so that's good. Okay, so get that round about just where I want it. Good, right, so we've got that in the channel, nice and easy. So the reason I went in so easy again is soapy water, make sure everything's nice and wet and it'll slide in, no problem at all. Right, next thing I use is Unger Green Clips. Now. These come in like so. Get this over here. There we are, just like that. Now I've used all of them, but you can see how many you get. You get lots and lots of them. So all you need is two per squeegee, one on each end. So we have two of them here. Now one side has little teeth on them and one side doesn't. Now the side with teeth is the side that actually touches this rubber. So the flat side of it faces yourself and the teeth go into the actual rubber itself to hold that rubber, okay? So because we've been using the cloth, it's dried out the squeegee rubber a little bit. So we're gonna dunk it back in the water there and it should slide in a little bit easier now. This is how I get them in. But again, because it's etre, it's quite a tight fit. So it might take a little bit of persuasion just to get these in eventually they should but you get them in and it means that your rubber is not going to buckle it's not going to move it's absolutely brilliant so there we go that's one in it's wet to the other side and push that one in too well, that went in a lot easier <laughs> right so just make sure that both ends are nice and flush now when you're cutting your squeegee rubber I like to use the Mormon squeegee rubber as a template when you buy one of these, you will get a rubber with it. Um, if your preference is to use a different kind of rubber, um, whether it be Etre, Pulex, uh, Facelifts, Razor Red, something like that maybe, and whatever it is you use, use the Mormon pre-made and pre-cut squeegees, uh, squeegee rubber should I say, as a template. So lay it on top of your uncut bit of rubber, draw the lines, this is personally what I do, and then I use a Stanley blade lay it on top of the line and use a hammer and just gently tap on top of the Stanley blade and it cuts perfectly through the squeegee rubber giving you a nice clean cut. So you have the straight edge there for about 3-4 mil and then you have the angled cut there to make sure it gets right into the corner of the framework. Okay, so that's it all perfectly set up, nice and flush, the angles are perfect. We have our Unger green clips in the end there so it's, the rubber is not going to move. Um, and it's not going to buckle at the ends either. So that's the channel set up, completely unmodified, just the younger green clips in just to help firm things up a little bit. Now, I'm going to pop that back in the squeegee. 
So you have to have it in swivel mode to get the channel back in. Have it either fully to the left or fully to the right, it doesn't matter which way. What that does is it reveals the bit you're going to have to pinch together. There's a spring in here, so you pinch that together and it opens up the jaw of the clamp there. When you can see the, the teeth there that also help hold the rubber. So you place that onto the channel. And then on the reverse side of the channel, there are two little dots that you can then line up the actual clamp. And then push that blue button again to put it into fixed mode. Okay, so that's the squeegee completely set up and ready to go. So now what we're going to do is have a quick look at how to actually use a squeegee and some hints and te techniques on how to use it to make sure you're getting the best results we possibly can. Okay guys, let's go and have a look. Okay guys, so now we're going to have a look at the in-hand technique. So before we start, just to let you know, this has been dunked in clean water first and then detergent, a line of it has been put on one side and then a line of detergent on the other and then we're ready to go. That should do at least a good three, four, five windows depending obviously the heat of the day that you're working in. Now, what we like to do is soap it up first, leave a couple of millimetres gap at the top. We don't want to jam the mop into the top of the frame because otherwise you'll get them rundowns, especially if it has a rubber seal that comes down onto the glass, which this one doesn't. This is a PVC frame with a rubber seal. It's a modern window. The rubber seal is actually just tucked away inside the framework there, which is nice to work on. So what you want to do is just try and aim and leave a couple of millimetres gap at the top there, okay? You will get quite quick at judging it and then doing it quite fast. And obviously when you're squeegeeing the window, the water will carry up to the top of the frame to give that uh, last couple of millimetres are clean, but you just won't get the rundowns. So we'll show you what I mean. So I've just soaked up there. I've left a little bit, a tiny bit of a gap, nice and soaked up. Keep, especially if you're in insides like I am now, keep the applicator just below the squeegee to catch any drips. So like we looked at the techniques video, it doesn't matter where you cut in from, you can either cut in from the left, pull across and down, or you can cut in from the right and pull down, or you can cut in from the middle which is my preference. I like to cut into the middle, clear the left, clear the top, clear the right, and then fan the window down. And close out the bottom. Okay, so to get this to work perfectly, the ingredients that we need are a decent bit of squeegee rubber that's got no nicks out of it and it's not too worn. We need our angles to be cut correctly, so make sure we either use a piece of Mormon squeegee rubber pre-cut as a template and um, make sure we're cutting those angles correctly so you don't get any lines um, and it also gets into obviously the corners of the framework properly as well. As for the solution, we need the solution to be soapy enough that we get the glide but not too soapy so that you'll get soap trapped in the back of the squeegee which then bleeds out onto the glass. So like I say that's why normally what I'll do dunk this into a clean bucket of water, put a line of dish soap on one side, a line of dish soap on the other, and then you're good to go. So let's have a look at that again. So soap up, give that a good scrub, place the applicator underneath. You can get into a habit of doing this outside as well because even when you're outside, you're catching the drips and it means that you've got a minimum amount to clean up at the bottom on the sill rather than if you don't, have anything to capture it and you just squeegee that down you have gonna have massive puddles of water and mess to clean up at the bottom so you know less less work to do you know think ahead catch the drips and you won't have so much to clean up so we'll do that again pull across the top now in 25 degrees which this is in my hand is maybe roughly about two to three inches away from the glass um, in 25 degrees now if you're in 10 degrees which you push this button on the side into 10 degrees, you need to have the handle further away from the glass. So that's more almost out at a zero degree. So if the window was like straight in front of you, say it was on the end of a pole, you would probably need it in 10 degrees to be able to squeegee the window down. Now, if you were quite close to the window, say the glass was up above your head, um, just maybe just that kind of height, and you were trying to close out to the bottom of a bit of framework or a bit of a sill, put it in 40 degrees, 
which means then the handle has to be closer to the glass. Okay, so if you think about it, 40 degrees, very close to the glass, the handle, that is. 25 degrees, medium amount of distance away from the glass. And then 10 degrees, maximum distance away, handle has to be from the glass. Okay, best way to remember it, especially when you're on a pole, um, when you're quite close to the building, like really close to the building, 40 degrees, medium distance away from the building on a pole, 25 degrees, quite a far distance away from the building, so say three meters plus away from the building, then 10 degrees. You know, so if you're almost, almost looking straight out in front of you, you want it in 10 degrees. Okay, so in hand, I like to keep it at the medium setting of 25. That's kind of my comfort uh, setting for in hand. So I'll do that again. So you kind of cut in like this again, along the side or cut in from the middle or cut in from that side okay and close out okay and the thing the reason why i love these squeegees especially here in the uk it's because it works really, really well on our kind of framework anyway, because you get zero detailing. There's nothing I have to wipe around the edges of that window. Um, absolutely brilliant. You could literally walk up to it, squeegee it, quickly give the sill a wipe, and that's it done. You know, so absolutely fantastic squeegee. If you use a standard squeegee, after squeegeeing that down, you'd have to get your microfiber cloth out and detail all the edges. Whereas this squeegee, you don't which especially for pole work is really good. Speaking of pole work, let's have a look at pole work. Okay, so here we have just a standard short pole that I'm going to be using. Um, this is the Mormon accelerator again uh, on the pole, Mormon pole with the end locking cone. So it's locked on there, it's not going to move or spin. So you'll definitely need one of them, especially for doing precision squeegeeing. We need that squeegee not to move, okay? So definitely need a locking cone, whether you're going to use an Unger pole or a Mormon pole, something like that, you need the squeegee not to move. Okay, so again, we've got the flick pad attached. So flick it over. Now for soaping up, you probably won't see me, but I just want you to focus on the squeegee itself here. So what we're going to do is, again, we're going to soap up to the top. What I like to do is use the edge of the flick pad here, because if you use the top of it, it's quite, you can see quite bulky, quite fluffy, and it's gonna end up soaking the top of our frame here, which we don't want. Okay, so it's set at 10 degrees, the squeegee, because the window is basically straight out in front of me. So we have it at 10 degrees. We use the edge of the flick pad, like that, okay? And then if I have a look at it, there is no soap on the actual frame. Whereas if I was to use the top of that flick pad and soap it like that, the, obviously the chances are I'm going to hit the frame and I'm going to get rundowns, which we definitely don't want if we're going to be doing high pole work. So to guarantee that we're not going to get any soap on that frame, use the edge of the flick pad, pull it across and then pull it down and start soaping it up like so. The rest of it doesn't matter, you can just soap up the rest like that and it's ready to go. Flick the flip pad back over the squeegee. Now, this is the way I like to do it. So start in the middle, same as I do in hand, pull across into that corner, pull down, ready to go across the other way. Pull across the right hand corner and then do a straight pull right down. Okay, so we've got a number seven that's nice and clean on the window here. Now, we want to clean the left hand side and I'll show you why. So I like to start all the way over here to the left. So bring your squeegee after you've finished doing that pull down, all the way to the left, back on the glass. And then what we're gonna do is bring it over down here, because we're gonna create a dry edge on the top left here. Pull it over, down the left hand side. So now what we've been left with is basically what I like to call the tower of solution. So this is our tower here. Okay, so that's all we've got left. We've cleared the top, the right, and the left. So, to clear the middle, normally what I do, pop it anywhere, here or here, doesn't really matter, somewhere near the top of our tower, 
pull it over the right hand side, over the left hand side to catch the top, and then just start fanning it down. It's gentle turns, not steep turns. We don't want that. We just want gentle turns all the way down, like parachuting down the glass, and then close out at the bottom. So we've got zero detailing, we've got zero lines, all because the solution is right, the rubber's been cut right, and it's in the right place. I've got my Unger Green clips in there, which is stopping the rubber from moving. And our squeegee is set at the right angle. So the window's straight out in front of me, so I want 10 degrees. Now, if I was a little bit closer to the building, now say this window is a bit higher above my head. Say we're doing still off maybe a ground floor building, but the glass is a little bit higher. Say we're this close to the building, you know, we maybe want it in 25 degrees for that. So soap it up again. Now, obviously this is just to simulate what you would need for 25 degrees. So if we were at 10 degrees, the pole's more out like that. For 25 degrees, more like that. Same as in hand, remember? In hand, 10 degrees, 25, 40. Same with the pole. 10 degrees, 25 degrees, 40. Okay, so 25 degrees, clear that top edge, down the right hand side, over, down the left hand side. Okay, and then fan that tower of solution. Very squeaky squeegee I've got here. <laughs> Sounds like my knees. Right. So there we are, a nice clean window. Now I'm not going to demonstrate 40 degrees because it's not going to work because otherwise I would have to stand like this and that would just be silly. So you get the idea anyway. 10 degrees, 25 degrees, 40 degrees. Okay, again, time, practice, effort. That's what you're going to do to get these perfect results every time. Now, I never really get lines anymore. I don't get arcs. I don't get detailing. I never get any issues because I've got all the ingredients to make it work. It's the same if we use the illustration of making a cake. If you leave out an ingredient to making your favorite cake, is it gonna be your favorite cake anymore? Probably not. So get all the ingredients right for using this squeegee and your life is gonna be bliss. Okay guys, so that is us used it in hand and on a pole. Now I've got various other videos you'll see where I use and do high pole work and give you some hints and tips on how to do high pole work. So check them out using angles at height and things like that. So, but we've just basically covered the basic techniques there of how to set up the squeegee, get all the ingredients right, and how to use it in hand and on a pole. Okay guys, so that is basically it for using the upgraded tool and techniques, hints and tips. And that's basically everything. So you should have all the tools, knowledge and skills now to basically progress with your career, progress with your company, and progress with your skill. So, it's time for you to become a master of your trade. Thanks for watching guys. Remember to like and subscribe and share and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.